Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the fourth episode of Chess. Within this episode, we're going to be learning how to just um, create every single movement for every single piece. As you can see, if we get to choose a knight, we can go in the knight direction. We can do the same exact thing with the pawn, so two step ahead, one step after the first move. The queen goes in all the direction it wants, and also we've added this highlight mechanic as well. So we're going to be able to see where we're allowed to go. So that's what we'll be doing in today's episode, and um, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Alright guys, so we're going to be starting the fourth episode by highlighting tiles in which we're allowed to go. So we're going to be creating some code right now that has to do with um, getting, getting to know where your piece can actually belong, you could say. So inside of chess piece, I'll be creating a virtual function that will serve for everybody, right? Every single piece at the moment. I'll call this one um, get available moves. And inside of it, we're going to be getting the board as a reference. So chess pieces array. So that's the array that we have. That's the big, you could say that's the biggest value we have right now in the chess board. And I'll call it board. Int tile count so we're gonna get to know um, how big the board is as well tile count why this is gonna be useful when we test for out of bounds for every single one of these pieces and just make sure we return a vector to int array did I just say array yes it's an array sorry a list my bad so we're gonna be returning a list get available move we're sending a reference of the chess piece because we don't want to duplicate this that's gonna be quite heavy if we do so so instead of duplicating we're gonna be sending in the board itself and don't worry, we're not going to be uh, changing stuff in there. You got to be really careful though. So don't make any modification to the board. Just use it as a read only, you could say. Um, yeah. So in here, I'll define a vector to int array called r for return value. And we're just going to return r for the moment. On top of that, um, for testing purpose, I'm going to be adding couple of places that we can go. So that's going to be for every single piece. That's just for testing purposes, uh, purpose. We'll add a new vector to, well, let me just hide my face too. Um, a vector to int, we'll add four of them. And just make sure we're having a look at like the pieces in the middle. So those are all the slots in the middle. And uh, yeah, so right now when we call get available move on any of those piece, whether it's the pawn or the king, it's always going to tell us that we're allowed to go in the middle. And that's okay for now. We're just testing stuff out. Back on our chessboard, one of the places where this could be useful is when we are dropping, when we're clicking on the object, so roughly around here. So we click on an object. We just realize that, yes, uh, this object is, well, there's something there, right? There's something on that tile. It is our turn. So if all these conditions are met, then we're going to go ahead and ask for all the available move. So we'll say available moves is going to be equal to currently dragging, oops, currently dragging dot get available move. Did I make it a private function? I did. My bad here. This is a public function. We need to be able to access it from the chessboard. So get available move. We're going to send in a reference of the chess piece. Also the tile count X and the tile count Y, just like so. This will return us a list of vector to int and we're gonna be saving it somewhere in the class. I don't wanna save it just right here because uh, we're gonna be needing it quite a lot of places. So instead, we're gonna be taking this value and we'll declare it here at the top. So a private list of vector to int called available move that I'll just create up here so we don't get any um, no reference problem in the future. Okay. Going back down here, is it our turn? Yes, it's our turn. We have our piece, we drag this piece, and now we get a list of available moves. So get a list of where I can go. Highlight tiles as well. That's our second part. We have to highlight the tiles. And to do so, we'll be using the same exact technique we've been using for the hover tiles. So we're gonna be changing its layer basically. And to do that, we'll be creating some new function. One of them is going to be called highlight tiles. Now I'm going to go ahead and declare that function down where, just below the positioning, I'll create a new section for it. So highlight 
tiles. It's going to be a private void that doesn't take in any parameter. And all we do in here is that we go through the list of available moves. So available moves dot count. And inside of that list, we are going to be saying, well, first we're going to get the object behind that move. So tiles at the index available move i dot x available move i dot y dot layer is going to be equal to layer mask name to layer and then we'll change that to highlight of course we don't have that uh, layer thus far so we'll have to create it in just a bit but before we do so let's duplicate this function and make another one for remove highlight tiles in which we're going to do the exact same thing here but instead we will put that on tile and we'll finally clear the available move list. Okay, so before I go and uh, implement the remove highlight tile, we're going to be looking at um, creating this, this layer first and then assigning things to this layer and then eventually highlighting it in, um, in color, a different color. So if you remember, what we need to do in this case is we need to do, I believe, three things. First, go under our pipeline asset. Oh, wait, no, no. First, go under any object and create a new layer. This layer is going to be called highlight. We don't have to assign it to anything right now. That's totally fine. Um, and then we can go to the forward render, close up hover, open up a new one. This one's going to be called highlight. I think you have to close it off because there's like a, a bug if you open two of them. Nope, not anymore. Okay. Um, and then here we'll be setting the queue on transparent only render on top of highlight and also render after transparent. The material we'll be using is one that we have to create right now. I'll call it highlight tiles. We'll be using a different color. This color we're gonna be using is uh, maybe a small gray, uh, sorry, green like this. And then I'll drag and drop this inside of the override, just like so. So now when you have an object that has the highlight, it should turn green technically. Well, clearly this one doesn't, but this one is also not on um, transparent. So I'll just put that here just to see, just to test. Okay, so it seems to work. I'm going to go ahead and change the layer back to default for the board and then hit play. As I pick up a piece now, you're going to see that the highlight has highlighted the tiles that we allowed it to, um, to move to. So under chess piece, these four tile here have been highlighted. Now it's time for us to actually remove the highlight and we will do it at, I believe, three different spots, right? So one of them is when we complete our move successfully. And I believe I'm not going to do it in the move to, but instead I'll do it in the update function. So here, if we do a valid move or not, we're going to highlight. No matter what happens, we are highlight, we're removing the highlight of the tiles. Uh, you could do it here at the top or you could do it at the bottom. In both cases, we're dropping this, um, you know, we're dropping the currently dragging. Therefore, I want to, well, you know what, since we're dropping that here as well, might as well just put these two function down here, which is going to allow us to clean up things. There we go. That should work for the moment, at least. So in both cases here, we're removing the highlight. Where else are we removing the highlight? Hmm. Oh yeah, so if we're not in the raycast, we also have to put it down here. So every time that we see currently dragging is put back to null, technically we should also be removing the highlight because we're no longer dragging something. Let's give this a try. And as I drop my piece, the highlight disappear. As I drop it inside outside of the board, it still works. Now, one of the issues that should be happening is if I go over them. Well, it's actually not open. It's not causing any issue, but I don't get to see where is um, I don't get to see what I what I want to see here. And um, one of the problem I realize here is that I can't actually drag anything in the middle because it's not considered as a place I'm allowed to recast simply because these are now on a new layer. We are no longer casting on top of them. So we have to go back at our raycast, which is up here. And we also have to include the highlight layer. And now we're going to be casting on these three. So a tile, a hover, and also a highlight, which is going to be very important for the logic of our game. 
And now we have this problem that I was thinking. So as we go away, the tiles that we're supposed to be able to go to are no longer highlight. And to fix this, we have to create, well, first, every, everywhere that we put it back on tile, we have to, um, to say that, hey, instead of putting it back on tile, look if it's in the highlight, and if it is, just put it back on highlight. And to implement this, instead of actually implementing it on, on a single line like this and having to re-implement it on another line, we are instead going to create a helper function. So once more, I'm going to go at the bottom here, and I'll put this one in operation because we'll need it for other things such as uh, checking if the king is in check or something like that. Um, I'll call this one private bool contains valid move and we're going to be sending in a list of moves so reference list of vector to int moves and then we're going to be sending in a, um, a position where we're actually attacking or we're allowed to go in here is going to be fairly simple we're going to iterate through the list of moves so as long as we're smaller than moves.count we're going to check if moves at the index i dot x is equal equal to position dot x and moves at the index i dot y is equal equal to of course position dot y if that's the case return through it's a place we're allowed to go it, it is actually contained within the list of moves and if we don't find any match then of course return false all right so with this in mind we are going to go back where we set our tiles for example here when we go back to this i'm going to say contains valid move i'll call the function so i'll say reference available move and where we're going is actually the current hover in this case and i've put that in parentheses here so i could do a ternary operator so here this gives us a boolean and with that boolean we can say if this is true then do this else do that so let's copy this over this is highlight oh, highlight else it's tile and I'll copy the right side of this function completely and also put it somewhere else here at the top okay cool now going back to my chessboard, let's see if this now works. And it seems like it does. Now one last thing we have to do before we get into coding every single one of these pieces move is to restrict where we're allowed to go. So when we drop our target, we need to say, hey, only, only you're only allowed to go where it's green, basically. And that's what we'll do by going under the move to function. So with our brand new function that we just made, contains valid move, we're going to enter move to, and inside of move to, we're gonna say, um, if we do not contain a valid move with the position we're going, in this case, I believe it's, well, let's do reference of the available move, and the position we're going here is a new vector two with X and a Y. If we, oh, sorry, if we're not containing a valid move here, let's just return false. And technically, I shouldn't have broken anything here. Need one more parenthesis. Here we go. And let's hope everything works. If it does, we're moving on to the next step. Yeah, can't seem to be dragging that. Unless it's in the green. If it's in the green, everything works. But if not, we don't get any result. Alright, so moving on to the next section in which we're going to be coding every single one move. Now, we do know that under the chess piece, we have this right here. Um, we could remove it, but we could also not remove it because we're going to be overriding it every single time. And here's what we will start with. We are going to start with the pawn. Under the pawn class, let's make sure we do a public override. Hmm. Public override get available move. And I'm going to have to type it this way. So public override list of vector to int get available move gonna make sure that list is included as well and we'll need a reference of chess pieces array we're also gonna need the int for tile count x and int for 
tile count y. Now I'm wondering, was it virtual? Why am I not able to override this? Because it's not marked as abstract. Okay, so my bad. I forgot to actually mark it as abstract. I oh, sorry, virtual. Now with the virtual statement, we should be able to build back and have this overridden. Uh, call this one board. Okay, cool. Now we're set. Awesome. As always, for every single one of these, I'm going to be declaring a list of vector2, which will be the return value. So I'll just call it r, instantiate the list right there, and then return r. Perfect. We should have just copied that over. It would have been much faster. Okay, so what moves are we allowed to do as a pawn? We're only allowed to go up. We're only allowed to go up by two tiles if it's our starting move, and we're allowed to go diagonal if there's an enemy in our diagonal. Now, technically, we're also able to do it if there's an enemy just next to us, uh, but that's a special move for later on. <laughs> so we're going to take care of these three moves that we just mentioned right now. And to do so, I'm first going to look into this piece direction. That's that's to know if we're white, we have to go up. If we're black, we have to go down, basically. So um, int direction, and I'm going to be using the team, which is a protected field or a public field. Um, and, and we have access to it inside of our chess piece. So do remember we have that. If team is equal equal to zero, then we're going inside. We're going to um, to go with one, oh sorry, one as a direction, else minus one. This way we can go up if we are white and we can go down if we're black. So we will be coding right here our very first move and it's gonna be the easiest one. It's the one in front. And to do so, what are the condition for our pawn to move one in front? Well, the condition is that our pawn, well, there has to be nothing in front of our pawn. So if board, at the index current x and then current y plus our direction. Now remember we can actually do that because our direction is, it actually depends on what team we're in. If this one is null, then our condition is met and we can say r.add and we'll add a new vector to say current x and current y plus direction, making it um, possible for us to move in that direction and on that new spot. Before we move any further, I'll just like to show you how it looks like. We like to test quite a lot on this channel. There we go. So this pawn can only go there, 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 and there, and so on. Same thing for the black side. And as you can see, you can't drag it anywhere else, but it works. So now our pawn are restricted. These other are still not restricted, but our pawn are at least. And if it faces something like here, if we're on the RAM, then we can't go any further. Now let's go ahead and code diagonals and also, uh, actually no, let's code two in front. So we're gonna do the two in front next. For it to work, we have to make sure that uh, we are in the initial position of that piece. So first, we're going to copy this line over and check if there's no one in between us and the second row. It's gonna be important because you can't jump to in front if there's somebody in between you and the, the place you want to jump. So here, first we check if in front of us is empty, and then we're gonna be looking at the following. If our team is white, and our current y is equal equal to one, we are in the initial position. But then on top of that, we also have to check if the new place we're going is also empty. So end our board at current x, sorry, current x, then current y plus the direction times two. And to make, I mean, this works as a priority of operation, but in case we're, we're being paranoid, let's just put that in, in parentheses as well. So that's, for example, zero and x, one and y, and this looks at plus two, which means three and y. So if this is null, then we are golden and we can actually add this new position so add new vector 2 and I'm just gonna copy that over so current X and then for the Y we're gonna use this okay so that's gonna work well with the white team so that's for the white team now for the black team same thing we just swap numbers around so instead of being team 0 it's team 1 the current 
y actually becomes current um, actually becomes six. And here we don't actually need to change anything because direction will take care of swapping those value for us. Once more, give this a try. We should be able to jump by two. But then after that, only by one. Same thing here, and we should not be able to jump over like as you can see over here. Same thing on both sides. Perfect. Next move is going to be the diagonal, also known as the kill move. And um, we're going to make it quite simple. So if my current x, oh sorry, current x is not equal to tile count minus one, then we're going to be looking at our diagonal. Uh, what I'm doing here basically is just making sure that um, if we have to move diagonal left, I I can't do that if that's the end of the board on the left. So I, I got to make sure that we are not. Is that the right thing? Yeah, it seems to be right. So we're not we're not beyond that point. So we can't be looking for a tile that is outside of the board. So instead we'll do current x plus one because we're going on a diagonal axis. Current y plus direction. If that is not equal to null, and then we have to check is that in our team or not. So we're going to be redoing the same exact thing. So taking this whole piece of code. If that dot team is not equal to team, which is that's the enemy team technically. Well, that's doesn't have to be the enemy team, but it's another another chess piece team. If it's not equal to ours, then we're going to go ahead and add this. So add and then new vector two as always. And we're just going to put that um, current X plus one, then current Y plus direction. And that's our diagonal move right here, but only for the left side. Actually, go only when we're going on the right side, I believe. Now let's do the following. If current X is not equal to zero, so if we're not on the very left side of the board, then we're going to be looking at current X minus one here as well. And we're going to be adding current X minus one in the list. And that's our kill move. And I believe with that, we should already be done with the pawn, which was not a complex one, but also not the easiest. As you can see here, now I have two options. I can go forward, but I can also go here. And if we bring this guy over, I have now three options and I can go in that direction. Same thing for both team. And then here we go. So here we have a situation in which you can go to forward, but you can also go in diagonal. Good, so we've done it for our pawn piece. Now, I actually invite you to do if you want, you can actually drop the video and, and do it for the rest of the pieces yourself. Give it a try. It's a, it's a good practice. It's a good way to actually get your, your skill a little bit up. Um, if you don't want, of course, stick along with the video. I'm gonna be doing all of them right now and you can verify if you wish afterward, but I'm just saying that it's a, it's a good practice. You learned that in school here. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one in the list should be technically Rook which is going to be quite a fun one. So this time around, I'm going to be copying over my whole signature so I don't, I don't have to rewrite it again and mess it up. Um, and we will, of course, declare a list of vector two. Oops. It's going to give me anything else than, than what I need here because I did not include one Unity engine and then system collection the generic. So now that it's done, we can return my art value. OK, so for this one, quite simple. We're going to be running through a loop um, on all the directions. So top, down, left, right. And that loop will keep on running until we reach either zero for left, uh, tile count X minus one for right, and so on. So let's start with the down direction. So down, so we're going to do a for loop in here. And what I'll do is I will swap the I over here for current Y minus one. So we're going to start here. And then we're going to do it as long as I is actually bigger, oops, sorry, is bigger or equal to zero. So we're going down as long as we hit, you know, the bottom of the board. Also, let's swap that over. We have to do minus minus because we are going in the other side. Now in here, I'll call the boards. So we'll be looking every time um, just below us. So we're, we're going to do bold current X 
and then do i i which should be for example if we're at 4 4 it should be at 4 3 in this case and if that is null then we can add it we have an empty spot we can technically keep on going further there we go so that works if it's empty but then we should also be looking if it's not empty and it's an enemy target so i'm just going to copy that over and i'm going to say if it's not equal to null but on top of that and i have to put that in bracket i'll explain that in a second on top of that if board at current x we can just copy stuff over right <laughs> this dot team is not equal to my team then we're going to go ahead and add it to the list the reason i did not want to put that on a single line is because on top of that i'm going to add a break statement so we can get out of this for loop and it's very important to do so because for example um if it's null then we add a certain thing and then we keep on going for the next one um, if it's not null anymore we we don't need to keep going for example if there's a piece in between in between me and the end of the board i want to make sure that we stop there because the the rook cannot go over pieces so we have to stop after we hit anything whether it's our team or the other team so here I do a break and that's it. That's all we need. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy that over. We need to do it for the left side, right side, up and down. So we're going to go ahead and copy this down statement, put it down here and call it up instead. The only thing we should need to change is up here in the for loop. First, we have to say it's plus one. So we start above where we are. We also have to make sure we don't go beyond the bond, the bounds. So that would mean as long as we're smaller than tile count dot y and then finally we increment instead of removing one every single for loop and that should be it for this one i'm going to copy the down once more this one's going to be for left and you guessed it instead of doing current y we're going to do current x as long as we are hmm as long as we are smaller no, as long as we're bigger than one, so that would work. Yep, so I minus minus, and then we got everything working. But then on top of that, instead of just changing the for loop, since we're also changing direction, we have to come down here and replace our current X with I, and our previous I with current Y. Oh, I forgot one down here. There we go. Let's copy this over. This should be right. Here we do a plus and also plus plus and we have to make sure that we are smaller than tile count x okay so our code looks something like that i believe that should be good enough one thing i want to do just for testing purpose we already tested the pawn right so that's going to be fine i'm going to go back to my chess uh my chess board and i'm going to do where it says spawn all the pieces, I'm just going to go comment out the pawns. I don't want to see the pawns anymore. So let's just remove them completely from our board at the moment. This is going to help us test with all these, um, these pieces in the back line that can't actually go over anything. So here, as you can see, I can go up to this tower and actually delete it. And then here, I can only go to the first one. I can't jump above, so that's perfect. I have all the direction that seems, oh, no, not all the direction seems to be working. So left and right are not working right now. Good thing we're testing. Let's find out why. Oh, here's my problem here. I forgot to change um, this current X for a current Y, which would mean that I also forgot to change it here as well. My bad, just a typo, which should happen quite often as we are copying and pasting code. Right, back to this, I can go this direction, left as well, and I can go in every single direction. As you can see here, it stops for my pieces, but it doesn't stop for theirs. Oh, I missed my drop here. But it seems to work just well. So we have the rook movement working, we can then move on to the knight. Alright, so this one, again I'm going to be copying over my signature including the list this time so 
So this one is a little bit tricky because we have a total of eight direction and um, it's gonna be quite a lot of code, but I'm gonna try and do it quickly. We're gonna start with the top right. So uh, do note that here, one thing that is cool is that we, we don't have to look for um, obstruction. So we can simply go ahead and, and just look at exactly the same spot, say, is it null? If it's null, we can go. If it's not null, is it the other team? If it's the other team, we can also go. But I'm gonna start by declaring a, um, just say x value and also a y value and I'll set it on the initial move that is going to be top right. So I'm going to say if x is smaller than tile count x which means are we inside of the bounds and y is smaller than tile count y same thing are we inside of the bound if that is the case let's look at x and y if that is null or it's the other team, so board at x and y. Oops, sorry, x, y dot team is not equal to our team. Then we're going to go ahead and um, add this new move. So a new vector 2. And we can do x and y. Okay. What is the issue here? Oh, did I say no? My bad. Uh, our team. <laughs> there we go. So that is for top right. I am going to copy this code over a couple of time, but you know what? Um, it's going to change a bit, so we have to be really careful. First, we don't need to redeclare this value. These value, we are going to be reusing them every time. So uh, now we've did the move that is one in X and two in Y. Instead of doing that, I'll do the one that is two in X and one in Y. Here, we still have to look for the bounds and we're doing it the right way because we're going top right. So here we only have to look if we're going beyond the bounds on the top right. So that stays the same as well. And that also stays the same. So that's good. We've done all the top right part. Now we're going to go ahead and do the bottom, actually no, the top left. Top left is next. And we do the same thing as before, but this time we do a minus one, which is going to change things quite a bit. And that's going to be equal to current x dot two. Okay. How does it change things? It changes things when we look for the bounds. So instead of doing a smaller than tile count, we'll do is bigger than zero. And in this case, uh, we don't change the Y because this one is still going up in positive. And that's it. Now, I believe the rest actually stays the same. So that I'm going to copy over. Let's grab this again. Our second top left is minus two and then plus one. And we we keep the same exact value. Okay. Now let's do we should do bottom right. And it goes a little bit like this. So x is equal to current x plus one. This one goes back to positive. Y is equal to minus two. So current y minus two. And um, x is smaller than tile count, so we keep the positive bound. But this time for y, we check if this one is bigger than zero. And then we can copy this piece of code over. Copy this one again. We are going to do the other way on the bottom right. So here, plus two, minus one. And we keep this code the same. All that is left is bottom left. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Bottom left is minus minus, I would believe. So minus one, minus two. Here we have to swap that for is bigger or equal than zero. And the Y bound is also good. We can copy that over and swap these two numbers. Okay, a lot of copy and paste, but I think we have our knight. And yeah, it looks good. So it goes in all the directions. We can also kill target with it. And uh, this is our knight. Good, next up is the bishop. So where is the bishop? Here it is. Same thing as before, copy that over. Return R. And include the generic. So with the bishop, we can go in diagonal. That's totally fine. But then we also have to make sure we don't try to jump over target. So just like the rook, we're going to have to be looking for, um, is there obstruction in between my target? 
and we're gonna start with the top right now with top right I'm first gonna start to do a, a for loop right because we have to, to look for every single moves in a certain direction so here what I'll do is I'll start a for loop and I'll write this one manually um, just like I've done with the previous one the night I'm gonna declare a x value that I'm gonna say this is equal to current x plus one because we're going top right but then on top of that I'm going to put a comma and declare another value inside of here that I'll just call y and you don't need to put int in front here because um, you can declare multiple int with just a comma y is gonna be equal to current y plus one because we're going that direction and then we're going to do the semicolon in our for loop so that's our the thing we do initially in the for loop then we have to do the condition which is going to be as long as x is smaller than tile count oops tile count x and it's a end condition inside of here as well y is smaller than tile count y then we can close the condition of our for loop and then finally do x plus plus and y plus plus so it's like a double for loop, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. It's quite cool. <laughs> Inside of here, we're going to be looking if the place we're going is empty. So if x and y is equal equal to null, if that's the case, let's add it to the list. You know the drill, x, y, boom, okay. Um, and just like we did with the rook, we also have to look if it's the enemy target. So I just copy that over. So if it's not equal to null, I guess we could also do an else statement in here. Yeah, so let's do an else statement instead. If it's not equal to null, and the board at xy.team is not equal to my team, then we're gonna go ahead and add it here. But we have to make sure we break. As mentioned earlier, if we don't break, it's not going to take care of the obstruction. Okay, so that's it for top right. Top left is the following. Instead of doing uh, plus one, we do minus one. We also have a different bounce. So we're gonna be looking if X is bigger or equal than zero. And here we do minus minus instead of plus plus, only for the X axis. I don't think we have anything else that changes. It doesn't seem to be that way, no. Okay, next up we'll do bottom right. In which we're going on the right side here. So we swap our X back as long as we're smaller than tile count x and x plus plus now let's do our y so in this case we're going down instead of doing plus one we'll do minus one we'll check if y is bigger or equal to zero and y minus minus let's copy that over one one more time <clears throat> for the bottom left and we'll say of course minus one x as long as it's bigger or equal to zero, x minus minus. And just like that, we've already made our bishop. So it gets to a point where making this is really fast. And as you can see, very effective. It still works in all the directions. Same thing for this team here as well. And it makes you think that one of the hardest moves to program is actually the pawn because this one has a direction. <laughs> so. All right, so we're done with this one. Next up is the queen, I believe. The queen is so simple. It's actually so simple. So let me grab this again. And here's what we do for the queen. We're actually going to go back, take the rook. I'm gonna grab everything inside of the rook and paste it here let's collapse it and then I'm gonna go inside of the bishop take everything inside of the bishop and paste it inside the queen right after the move for the rooks so we're combining both the rook and the bishop together which would mean we now have a queen And here she is she's ready to go in pretty much all the direction she can kill the targets um, and everything seems to be good and now finally the last but not the least we have the king so this king over here and 
it's very similar to the rook, but uh, we actually have to stop. So we're only looking one piece ahead of us. Now for this king, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to create a couple of sections here. First, one is going to be right, the other one is going to be left, up and down. Knowing we can go on all diagonal axis, but I'm going to be treating three of the right one, three of the left one, and then up and down as single entity. So that's going to be uh, top right, right and bottom right. That's going to be top left, left and bottom left, and that's just going to be up and down. Um, the reason I want to do that is just so I can look for bounds on this side. So if current x plus 1 is smaller than tile count, then we're going to go ahead and look at right. So yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll code these after that. But first, let's look at this board. So if board at current x plus 1 and current y is equal to, equal to null, then we have an empty spot and we could technically go there. So r.add new vector through int and then current x and current x plus one, and then current y. Next up, we also have to look if we um, if there's a target there, so if there's an enemy. So I'll do a else if statement. So the else statement is gonna make sure there is something there, and the if statement is gonna make sure it's um, part of the other team. So here I'll do current x plus one, current y dot team is not equal to my team. And if that's the case, we're going to go ahead and add it just like so. And now we've just done the right. Now let's try and do the top right. So I'm just going to write it down as well. It's going to be exactly the same thing. So I'm going to copy that over but first, before I copy that over, I'll look for the y-axis bound. So if current x, uh, current y plus 1, if that's smaller than the tile count y, then we go ahead and paste everything we had earlier. But, right, we have to also add the y-axis. Okay, this seems to be good, so let's have a quick look. Diagonal, top right, diagonal, top right, diagonal, top right. And same thing down here, so this seems to work. Let's do bottom right. So as long as current y minus 1 is bigger or equal than 0, then we just swap all those pluses for minuses for the y axis only. And there we go, so we should have the right side of the king I'm kind of tempted to try it because I might have made a mistake. And it seems to work. Okay, so you can only go on the right right here. Um, same thing for this guy most likely. Yep, he could also kill another target. So we got the right working. Let's go ahead and do the left. So it's basically the same exact thing. So I'll copy the whole thing over. But instead of looking at current x plus 1, we'll do current x minus 1, as long as it's bigger or equal than 0. And then we'll do left over here and swap all the pluses that we see here for minuses and be really careful because chances are we're going to make a mistake here. So this is top right. Um, top right, we keep the plus in this case because we're going up in current y. But for the current x, we swap that over to minus. And now for bottom right, we just swap everything to minuses. Okay, it seems to be working, I hope. <laughs> um, and then for the two other conditions, very simple. We are going to code them directly right there. So if current y plus 1 is smaller than the tile count, y. We're going to be looking at that spot specifically on the board. So current x, current y plus 1, if that is equal to null. Or if the board, of course, has a target on it, but it's the other team. Then we add this one. So add a new vector to int with the current x and the current y plus 1. Let's copy that over. 
Oof, and we should be done finally a lot of code today a lot of code but it's all code that hopefully makes sense to you um if it doesn't i would invite you to just try and write this one by yourself it's uh it's quite a fun adventure you get to play with multidimensional array and it's something that made me do in school that i guess helped me out quite a lot um sure <laughs> i can't confirm this part but it was really fun to do as a project school project so that being said, let's have a look at our game, see if we can move in all the directions that we need. It seems like our king is able to move in all the directions. Now, do note that we're not supposed to be able to throw ourselves as a king. We're not supposed to be able to throw ourselves right in front of the queen because we would be in checkmate uh, since it's the other player turn. We are not able to beast move in in chess, normal chess. Now, this preventing mechanic, preventing my, my player to go like here, for example, because he would be... Um, in range of the queen. This is not something we'll do in the first section, it's something we'll do in the second section because it requires simulating moves and that gets really really long and that's that's what I reserve for section 2 basically. So if you want to get these make sure you hit the subscribe button because we're releasing this uh, the second part of this chess tutorial as soon as we hit 8000 subscriber which should be quite soon hopefully. Um, that being said we're pretty much done for today we've made a lot of work and in the next episode we're going to be looking at um, adding turns so we can just wrap this whole loop up and um, yeah so we're going to be adding turn and then after that it's going to be time to look into doing special moves such as castling, alpasa and promotion of course so i hope you guys enjoy as mentioned please drop a like share with your friend and i will see you very very soon cheers